How do you cram a Murphy bed into a camper van? Well, it's easier than you might think, and I'm gonna show you how in this video. Just to give you a sense of scale of this bed, from where I'm standing right now to that TV is about 12 feet. I have a long wheelbase extended high roof Ford Transit van and this mattress is in between the size of a twin and a full. So this length here is about 78 inches and the width is about 46 inches. The mattress itself is 45 by 74. So just a little over six feet and a little under four feet wide. Um, depending on your body type and your um, I guess comfort with multiple people in the bed, you could fit two people in here uh, or it might not work for you. So I, I think that's your own judgment call. It seems like people are 50-50 of whether they could actually get two people in something of this size. Um, but the bones of the bed frame, the risers, the back that's bolted to the cargo van wall, the bones are all three quarter inch plywood. And I use the cheapest plywood that they, they sold at Menards that was three quarter inch. Wood prices were sky high at that time. They've since come down a bit. The rest of this is just a veneer. So the latches are essential, which I'll explain for my application. It might not be essential for your application. It just depends how you do this. Cause there's really one or two ways that you can go with this Murphy bed. I bought plans for a Murphy bed on like create a bed or build a bed. I'm not sure what it is. I'll, I'll show you which one that is. Um, it comes with really what I needed was the hinge. So the hinge is what sits behind this wall and I'll show you. That's what the bed pivots on to come out. So if this bed's 46 inches, this space here is about 32 inches that I have 32 inch clear from here to here. And the bed pivots out and some of it stays behind this wall because of the hinge. So the hinge makes this thing work. Um, but the other thing you get in the kit, which the kit is just uh, pieces of paper with the dimensions of a bed. I bought the dimensions for a twin bed and I modified it for my application because the mattress I got is kind of custom sized mattress. I think it was on Mattress Insider. Um, again, it's between the size of a twin and a full, um, but it was a size that they offered. It was kind of an off the shelf cart item that just fit in how I needed it. Well. They also give you, in addition to the, the hinge, they give you these pistons. And the pistons help support the weight of the mattress. I mean, again, this mattress might be 50, 60, 70 pounds, especially when you consider all the wood. I mean, this is essentially a four by eight sheet of three quarter inch plywood that you're lifting in addition to the mattress. So these spring loaded arms help hold up the bed. The problem I had, because I bought a, a twin size one, um, it just was too hard for me to pull down. I just couldn't do it. I initially in, installed the bed and you'll see in a second, I installed the bed with the pistons in there. It's, it's tough to get to. Um, I just couldn't pull this thing down. So I got rid of them and I just kept the hinge and now I just have these latches that hold them up vertically. And I'm gonna show you. you, you saw me in the opening scene, just by releasing these latches, I was able to get the bed to fold down. What you didn't see in the opening scene is my support for the bed. So the way this bed is designed, it's supposed to sit much lower to the floor. It's supposed to sit about uh, maybe eight inches off the floor. And at the top part of the bed, these kind of like, metal bar that comes with it flips over and then that supports the bed and holds it level with the hinge. Well, that wasn't going to work for my application because I've got all this important stuff underneath. I've got my, my waste hoses. Um, and then in here, I got all my batteries, uh, solar inverter, all that stuff. It's all underneath there. So I wanted to lift the bed up, keeps me higher off the ground, keeps me warmer. You see, I got the, I got the propane furnace going. It's cold out there right now. It's like 40 degrees. So a little bit higher up, that helps. Um, but I've been sleeping this thing for a couple months now. I've had no problems. Let's get it down. I'll show you what it's like behind 
the bed and how this is all secured and fastened. Again, it's easier than you might think. I was intimidated by this project before I started, but now that I did it, no problem. I'd do it again. So to get my bed set up, I actually go behind the bed. You'll see, I'll show you a photo of how I attach this. This is a sawhorse. And uh, let me put my camera still so you can see it. So every night, I just set up my sawhorse and it's conveniently the perfect height to be level or keep the bed level. And I'd be lying if I said I designed it this way on purpose. I basically crammed the bed in here and said, I'll figure out how to support it after the fact. And it turns out the sawhorse is the perfect height. So this little thing, again, I've, I've used this for a couple months. This little thing is able to support half the bed and then the hinges themselves supports the other half of the weight and the plywood is very strong. So pull it down here and voila. Let's get in here and you can see what's going on a bit. So this was the original stops and the um, fasteners for the hinge. So the bed is just like a little rectangular bucket. This is just up, um, I think this is probably about eight inches. And you see the sheet of plywood underneath. It's just a sheet of plywood really cut in half so you can manage the weight better when you're installing it. Um, and then it's just wrapped around like a rectangle. And then there's just the hinge here. You know, you, you screw in and fasten the hinge to the other side of the plywood. Again, imagine this is plywood, this is just covered up. Um, you fasten the plywood, you basically secure the hinge to this bucket, which makes sense more when you look at the plans. And the pistons go in here and that helps support the weight. But again, I didn't do that. Now, the, what I've done here, you're not really gonna see in the plans, but all I've really done is risen the, the pivot point to where I needed it to be, where it made sense for a clearance perspective. And I've bolted. So I took these two vertical risers, the hinges are in place, you squeeze the bed frame in between, and I took a piece of three quarter inch plywood, I screwed it into each of the vertical risers, and then at each one of these is a bolt into the side of the van using a plus nut. So, um, uh, there's rib nuts and plus nuts. Plus nuts are, uh, they're essentially the same. They're a, a metal sleeve that can go into a drilled hole and it expands, or just like kind of like a drywall screw, um, um, or one of those plastic screws that you put in drywall to anchor, drywall anchor. It's just like that, but for sheet metal. So I use the plus nuts. I can't remember. Uh, don't quote me, it's a very standard size uh, plus nut that I use. Um, and then I just bolted the boards, this board into the cargo van and that holds everything in place. I mean, this thing doesn't shift or move or rattle or shake. Um, and it's just been great. I, the first time I, I've, I've had this van for really five years and the first time I was going for one of those contraptions and I did make it uh, where the the bed had slats and it would slide out and then I would take all the cushions and arrange them and then that would be the bed. This is so much easier. So the main takeaways with the Murphy bed, you can use the hinge just by itself without those pistons that you might see elsewhere, but you need to plan for supporting half the bed if you plan on changing the height um, different from how it's designed. So I got lucky with this sawhorse that I now carry around out of necessity, but you might not get as lucky. You gotta plan out what's on the opposite side. Something like this, if you're thinking about doing your own van, is a big part of the design. It's gonna affect how you can lay out your van. If you wanna see all how all my other systems are laid out, I've got a toilet and a shower in here, ton of solar, um, battery capacity, uh, it's nuts. I mean, it's my tiny house on wheels. I travel the United States. I'm on a mission to give one random act of kindness in all 50 states. So I've actually got a few done so far. And if you want to find out how big the acts of kindness can get, just like and subscribe to follow along.